Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I want to show you how to solo The Castles of Burgundy, the card game. This is a small box card game, it costs maybe $10 to $15 online, but as you can see, even with small cards, it's quite the table hog, so we'll be moving stuff around to make sure you can see everything as we go. In the Castles of Burgundy, the card game, the point is to build up the biggest estate that you can that's worth the most victory points. So we're going to zoom in down here in a minute, but this is our area where we can store goods, workers, and silver, projects we'd like to build, and then projects that go into our estate. Uh, we are going to hopefully be scoring mostly off of what are called triplets, which are estate cards, uh, but you want to get three of the same color. So like three of these would be a triplet, and I would score for that. We're also going to be playing against a little AI opponent called Aaron, an almost real opponent. And he's really easy to set up, so that's what we're going to talk about first, so I can just move these decks off screen. So you have five rounds in a game of Castles of Burgundy, the card game. And so Aaron is going to get a certain number of automatic buildings every turn. So the first turn, he'll get three, four, five, six, seven. So you just draw off of your um, estate card pile and make, you know, um, five different piles, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's Aaron. He's done. And so at the beginning of each turn, we are going to see what he built. The other thing that's interesting about this particular game is that it doesn't matter whether we beat Aaron in the end, it matters whether we are equal to or ahead of him in points from round to round. So the goal of each round is to make sure that we are tied with or ahead of Aaron by the end, because if we can't pull that off, we're gonna lose. So before we get rolling, I'll show you how to do everything in just a second. Let's actually have a look at how Aaron's gonna do. So here are his first three cards. Fortunately, he did not build a triplet. He's just gonna start some over here. So Aaron, is rocking three different cards. Fortunately, he didn't get any points yet. So that's gonna be good for us because it gives us a chance to kind of try to get something going before he does. So here's what our setup is gonna look like, at least for now, before we need to move stuff around. Cards are gonna pile up real fast. So these are basically just cards that we're gonna need throughout the game. Silver, workers, which allow you to adjust die values. You don't actually roll dice, but the die values that are printed on cards matter, as we're gonna see animals. So if you have um, up to four different types of animals, you can score more points based on that. These are goods. If you ship them for the die values that are listed at the top of the cards, you get victory points for doing that. And um, here are just little victory point markers. These are bonus cards. So if you're the first player to complete a triplet, not only do you score for that triplet, but you pick up a bonus card for being the first person to do so. So there are little bonus cards for each color of building in the game. There are also two bonus cards for um, collecting one building of each color. The first of us to do that, Aaron or me, will get three victory points. The other will only get one. So these are just our little bonus cards that we've got set out here. Normally I like to set them all the way out, but we have limited space here. Here's my opening setup. Here's my little storage area. You get to start with one silver, one animal randomly drawn, and one good randomly drawn. This is my project area. I can't have more than three before I start, have to start building them into my estate, but any cards that I want to build later, I can put here. And then cards that I have built will go here. So when I'm trying to score or see how close I am to a triplet, this is where I'm going to look. So this is our little market area. This is where we're going to be purchasing estate cards. So all you do to set that up is you set out seven cards. First, you just put a card next to each die value. It doesn't matter what die values print on the top yet. Five, six. And then the seventh card that you place out, you do place next to its die value. So it's a six, we're gonna put it here next to the six. So that's our market set up for this turn. And in order to buy cards off the market, we're gonna have to see what's in our hand. So the way that that's gonna work is that we're gonna draw six cards off the top. And these six cards are what we have to work with for the round. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up two of them and have a look at their die values. So just, you know, this part, when they're in your hand, doesn't matter. It's strictly about die value. So the two and the one basically mean that I can purchase this one or this one, and then put them in my project area. So you purchase off of the market based on the die value that the card is next to. 
when you build it later, you have to match the die value on a card in your hand with the die value on the top of the card. So let's just say there's three of these. That'd be kind of cool if I could get a triplet going. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend this two to purchase this card. So now this card is in my project area, but I need a four to build it. So hopefully we'll pick one up out of our hand. So let's pick up a second card. Okay, we got another two. So I'm still rocking the ones and twos. Hmm, this is not actually great. Here's what I'm gonna do. So you have a certain number of options in a turn for the actions that you're going to take. You can buy a project to put in your project area. You can build a project to your estate, but you also have a few more options. If I had more goods in the right die roll, I could sell these goods. And what that would allow me to do would be to pick up victory points for each good sold, as well as get one silver card for each good sold. So like that would be cool if I had more goods, but we're not gonna do that right now. Another action that might be helpful for me is I can restock workers to two cards. So right now I don't have any workers, but if I can get a couple of these guys, see that minus one, plus one on the card, what they do is they allow you to modify a die roll on one of the cards that you're playing up or down one. So I could turn a one into a six, for example, and buy that. If I really was hurting for money, I could pay one of my cards in my hand to pick up one silver. If you get three silvers, then you can actually spend those to take an extra action, which we will certainly do at some point in the near future. Or if I'm really desperate and I have some silver and some workers, you can actually pay to convert those to victory points at a rate of three cards per one victory point. So if I have a card in my hand that's just not doing anything for me and I really need to catch up to Aaron, you can get desperate and try to like liquidate all of your resources to turn them into victory points. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I wanna hang on to this one because I can turn it into a six, which it looks like I'm gonna need one. So let's spend this two, we'll put it in discard and we'll take two workers to our supply. So I can do something with those hopefully in a moment. Okay, so now we have drawn a five, which isn't doing what I really want to do for me. Uh, I'd really like to try to get some of these, especially because building these also gives you more workers, which would be exciting. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna spend one worker to turn this one into a six. So the worker goes back here, the one goes over here, and I'm buying this card. And then let's draw one more. Oh, sweet, okay, so this time I did get a six. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend the six to build this project to my estate. So something very exciting happens when you build. Now that I've built, I get to take the special action that's on the card. So I get two workers to my supply for having built this card. So let's put it out there, grab two workers, and put them in my supply, which is great. That's a good moment for me. So here's my five, and I get to draw one more card. So I'm gonna pull a three, okay? So definitely one thing that I would like to do is I'm gonna play this three to pick this card up. And then I'm not quite gonna get a triplet this turn, sadly, but I'm gonna be well on my way because I have three of a kind like sitting around in my estate and project area. I'm gonna spend one more worker to turn my five into a six to build this. And then again, I get a special action where I get to pick up two more workers. So I'm making a little progress, but not as much as I'd like. And that's the end of the first turn, my cards are gone. So now that we've done this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clean up, and then we're gonna pick up Aaron's second deck. But before I do that, I wanted to show you these bonus cards. So round A is over. One thing that would have been nice, but sadly didn't happen, is that you get certain bonuses for completing a triplet within each round. If I had managed to complete a triplet this past round, I would have been able to take one of these bonuses. So either straight victory points, some random animals, some goods, some workers, or some silver. As it is, however, I'm gonna to have to hope for a round B bonus because round A, it didn't happen. So let's see what Aaron built this time. 
All right, so here's Aaron's deck of four cards because we're at round B. He started with three, now he's gonna get four. Let's see. He's gonna build a ship. He will build another of these buildings. He will build a cloister. So cloisters do something special for us. They're actually, they can be used as a wild in my display, but not in Aaron's. So he's just gonna start a separate triplet, but every time he builds a cloister, because they're worth so many points, we actually get a victory point. So we just picked up one point because Aaron built a cloister. So that would be ours. And then he also built a mine, it's his first mine. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven color card types, so he may be picking up a bonus next round just for diversity in his in his setup. So hopefully we'll be able to get some points this round to make sure that he doesn't sneak ahead of us. Okay, so let's build our market back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this one will go up by the one. A little space. As you can see, this game is like very card heavy. So this is our current market and we'll see what we can do with it over the course of this round. So I'm also gonna get six cards, four, five, six, and we're gonna start another turn to see what we can do. So I'm gonna overturn two of them. Oh, nice. Okay, so I got a couple of cloister cards, which would have been nice to have in the display because they're worth a lot, but I'll take them for, for purchasing power because this four, I can discard to build this um, project. So now I have a triplet. I get two workers for that because of the action on the card. And I'm also gonna get the bonus for being the first person to build a triplet of yellow buildings. So I also get to take this. So this whole pile is worth four victory points plus the bonus of one for a total of five. So Aaron is still at zero victory points, although trust me, he's about to catch up. We are hanging out at six because we picked up the one from when he built a cloister and the five from when uh, we just finished a triplet and got a bonus for it. All right, so we have this two left. Let's pull one more card. So we have a two and a six. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this um, this uh, castle because see that little block with a question mark in the middle of it? That's basically a free action. So building those does not hurt me at all. Let's go ahead and spin this two and pick it up to our project area. We'll pull one more card. All right, so now I'm rolling with two sixes. I don't really wanna buy this because I already have a triplet in those and I don't want another one. So let's go ahead and spin a worker. I'm going to turn this six to a five. I mean, sorry, the six to a one. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this pasture. I like that there are pastures on the board and also pastures let you pick up animals and animals score you points. So we're gonna put that in the project area. All right, so we got two sixes and then two fives in here. What would I like to do? Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and spend another worker. And I'm gonna go ahead and build, treat it like a five and build this castle. Because building the castle immediately lets me take a free action as if I had any die value on these cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and have spent that to grab this castle for free. I'm just kind of maximizing my actions here. So one of these will go. And then we will draw our last card. So it's actually worked out great because we can spend this one to build this one, which lets me take another free action. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this pasture since that seems to be going well for me. Then I'm going to use another worker to turn this six into a five and build a pasture, which allows me to grab a random animal. So I already have a chicken. Any of these is either of these is gonna score me a point. Let's do, let's get a sheep. Oh, nice. So the good thing about this is I can see a pig and a cow. If I can get one of each 
animal type, then I get some bonus points for that, and the max bonus points for animals. So I'll be keeping my eye on pastures as they come out. So that was our turn. The other thing is that because we completed one triplet in this round, in round B, I get to choose something else. So I can either take two animals, two goods, three workers, or three silvers. That's actually really tempting. Two animals would be great, but I don't think I want that right now. I want a little more flexibility. I've got three workers. I'm actually gonna grab the silver so we can play one more turn and see if I can show you how silver works in this game. So that was our bonus, and we're now going into round C. So let's go ahead and clean all this stuff up. And let's see what Aaron has for us. It's not gonna be pretty. He's starting to get more cards. So he's gonna have five cards this time. Yikes. Okay, so he's gonna build a castle. He's gonna build his third, I think this is a city hall. So he's gonna build that. So what that means is that he gets three points for this triplet. He's also gonna get a bonus because he was the first one to build that type of building. So here's his bonus. So Aaron is hanging tight at four points now. And he's not done with this yet. So he's gonna build another mine. He's gonna build another pasture. And he's gonna start a new triple here. Okay, so we've actually been pretty lucky. As you might have seen, you know, Aaron gets more and more cards each time. So he has done one, two, three, four, five, six. No, he's still trying to build a yellow building. So we're actually doing okay with Aaron, but as you might have guessed, right, if he is getting a lot of lucky draws on his cards, my race to keep up with him is a lot more intense. You know, right now he's only got like four points and I have five, six, and then for having two animals, I have one more victory point. So that's seven. So he's at four, I'm at seven. If he pulls a bunch more triplets in here and I don't, it's not gonna be a pretty round for me going into the later stages of the game. So, cause remember my goal is to stay tied or ahead of him and he's going to be catching up quite swiftly. So let's just do one more turn. I'm just gonna show you how everything works one more time. So we have one, two, three, four, five, oh, that's a lot of yellow, six, and then seven. And then I'll draw six cards and we'll see what we can do. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so let's pull two cards. Okay, so I have a four and a two. Hmm, is there anything that I want to buy? Not really. Okay, so here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and spend a worker to turn, ooh, let's use this four as a three. And we'll build this, which lets me pick up another animal. So I got three out of the four animals now, because I will just work on having some points. And then I need to put some stuff in my project area, so let's see what I can pull. Okay, so I have a two and a three I'm really not feeling another yellow. I'd like to keep working on something else. Let's think. All right, so here are my current cards in my hand at two and a three. They're not the most exciting. Tell you what, let's do something cool. Let's take a silver action. So I can spend three silver one time per turn. And doing that is gonna allow me to pick up three cards off the deck. And I have some choices. So I can use one as a card in my hand to purchase from here, or I can keep one and put it in my project area. The other two are going to go to discard. So these are all kind of nice, but what I wanna do actually is I'm gonna spend this one. These will just go straight to discard. I'm gonna spend this one to put this in my project area. That is what I'm gonna do. So what that means is that now I can spend a worker to turn this two into a one, build another triplet, take a triplet bonus for that triplet because Aaron hasn't built it yet. Here it is. So that is another five points for me. Plus I got the action on the card, which is to take an animal 
And now I have one complete set of animals, which is gonna be worth, I believe, which is gonna be worth four victory points. So four animals, four victory points, that's pretty nice. So that was a good turn for me. And let's just keep going. We still have this three, so let's draw. All right, so we have a three and a six. Why don't we go ahead and spend the six to pick up a ship so we can maybe get some goods and score off of those. That seems smart. Okay, so now we have a three and a four. I'm just not really loving any of these cards. Here you go, here, let's do this. Let's spend our last worker to make the three into a two. We'll pick up this four so we can at least build it maybe. And then, okay, so let's go ahead and spend the four to build a ship. What the ship does is it gets me one good, which is something that we also haven't talked about too much yet. So I'd like to talk about it before this video is over. So if we pick up a good, we can pick up one of the goods from this pile. So you might notice that the good that I have is like a darker color. One of the things that's best to do with goods, if you can, is wait until you have multiple goods of the same color to ship them. So I'm gonna grab this for now, but I don't wanna ship it yet. If I can get multiples of this color, then I can pay a one or a two, ship them all at the same time, and get all the silver and all the victory points for the value of one card, which is pretty nice. So we're just gonna put this here for now. And then this one, I don't really wanna buy any of this stuff, and I'm out of workers, so I'm going to spend this card to pick up two workers and take a worker action so that going into the next round, I'll have a little bit more flexibility with my card die rolls. Also, because I did complete a triplet this round, I can take one of the bonus actions on the round C card, which means I can do two workers, two silver, a worker and a silver, an animal, which I don't need, or a good, which might be cool. Let's go ahead and take two silver so that I'll have enough silver to do a silver action on a, on a coming turn. That seems smart. So now this is round D. You know what, this is going quick. Let's go ahead and play through. Okay, so as you can see, the bonuses for getting triplets just kind of go down as we go. So Aaron is gonna get six cards this time. So let's see how this goes. So he is going to get another card in this triplet and another. So that puts Aaron at six, seven points. Oh, he just built his first yellow building, and that is gonna give him a bonus for being the first to build a building of each type, which means that he just picked up three points. So he is now at 10 points. We'll just put this here for now. He is gonna build another one of these, another ship, and he's finishing a pasture um, triplet. So that's four points for him. I already got the bonus, so he can't get that. So Aaron is at three, six, seven, 10, 14. Aaron has 14 points right now. Let's figure out how many points I have. So I got this triplet with the bonus, so that's five. I have this triplet with the bonus for 10. I have one of each animal. So that puts me at 14. And he built one cloister, which puts me at 15. So I had a pretty healthy lead on Aaron last round, but now he's at 14 already, and I'm just squeaking ahead of him a little bit at 15. So what that means is that I need to step up my game in order to continue having a lead over him. So these will all go away, and we'll reset our market. So one, oh, good, another ship that could be helpful for triplet purposes. Two, oh, another one. Three, four, that's good too. Five, yep. Six and seven. Okay, so hopefully if I get some good cards this hand, I can complete up to two triplets, depending on how we're doing, because I have two of these castles. I have one ship already built. If I could buy and build two ships in a castle, that'd be great. That's ambitious, though. We'll see how it goes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. As you can see, this game gets really messy. Like, visually, this is just totally cluttered. 
So we have one, two. Okay, so let's see what the smartest choice is gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and spin this to pick up this ship for sure, no question. Okay, I have three and three. I'm not the most excited about this, but I like this. So let's go ahead and spin a worker to turn this into a four and grab this. So now my project area is full, but that's okay because I have the things that I need. I just need to figure out how to get these die values to work. We'll see what I can pull off. Okay, so I just pulled a six, that's actually great. So we're gonna put the six here to build this ship. So now we have two ships and it means that I get to grab a good. So I'm gonna go ahead and swipe this other um, one or two value good and put it here. Awesome, I drew a five, that's perfect because we're gonna spend the five to build our third ship. The good that we get isn't as exciting because it's a five or six value good, which doesn't really help us stack, but we'll take it. That also means that we get a ship triplet and the bonus. So we are like handily getting Aaron this time around. Normally he puts up more of a fight because he gets so many cards. So we have a three and a two. Okay, so I'm definitely going to spin a worker make the three into a four, build a castle, which is pretty cool. I will get a bonus for that castle because I'm the first person to get the three of those. They're worth a little less though because their action is so cool. And then I basically get to treat this because I got that mysterious action question mark. I get to take an action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab a cloister because it can help me make one more triplet down the line. And then this one, I don't really want any of this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and spend it to pick up two more workers. Because if you have no workers, drawing two workers are particularly good. You can never draw more than two. So if you spend your workers down and then spend a card to pick up workers, it's the most efficient way to spend a card on that. Okay, so that's my turn. So we'll clear out and then let's see what Aaron has for us in the final round. So, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. It would have been cool to have a little more variety, but that's okay. And then seven. Aaron's gonna have seven cards. So right now, Aaron's sitting pretty at 14 points. So he just made that 16 with that triplet, but he doesn't get the bonus because I got there first. 20. He doesn't get the bonus because I got it first, but he still gets four points for the triplet because that's the number on the bottom of this card. He will get, he will start another triplet of these pasture animals. So let's move this one up a little bit and just kind of start something fresh. Ooh, so another one. He'll start a new triplet here. He will finish his mine triplet for another four points. So it puts him at 24. And then let's see how many he's got going here. Okay, this will just start another triplet. So Aaron's total, he doesn't have a triplet of ships. He does have a triplet of mine, so it's four. This is three, four, and then another three. So eight, 11. He's part way through this, so he's got 15 points because he's got one triplet and then an incomplete. So that's just a total of 15 points. 18, 20, 24. Okay, so Aaron has 24 points from this round. Oh, and I completed two triplets, so I'm gonna get two triplet bonuses. So I'm gonna go ahead and take two gold and two workers. Okay, so he's at 24. I'm at five, 10, 13, 18, 22 with my animals, 23 with my um, barrel. So actually he's at 24 and I'm at 23. So I need to make sure that I score at least one more point this round or else he's gonna get me. But he's out of cards, so it's all to me now. So let's see what happens. I can just ship some goods and get enough to tie him to 
Oh, I don't want to look at those. Sorry. Let's just put those in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so we're going to pull two cards. So if I want to build a triplet this round, it's going to have to be more ships. So I'm going to go ahead and pay the six to pick up a six. And we'll draw another card. All right, so I have a three and a four. Woof. Okay. So let's go ahead and spin a worker to turn the four into a five and pick up another ship. I'm going to have to build these out if I want them. Okay, so now another three to four combo. Let's take the four with a worker to build this ship that's a five. So this is built now. Let's go ahead and spin this two. I'll show you how cloisters work. Let's build this cloister. So cloisters are wild. You can actually either score a lot of points off of them as a separate kind of triplet, or you can put them into a triplet. So I built this ship, by the way, I should get it good. So let's grab it. And then I'm gonna build this on top of the ship. So this is actually gonna count as a ship for the purposes of this triplet. I don't get an action for it, but it's helping me advance my desire to get one more triplet. So I'll score the ship number, not the cloister number, but it's still a score. And then I have these two. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend this one to build this triplet for four points. And then I'm actually gonna use a worker to turn this into a two. And I'll show you what shipping goods looks like. So now that this is a de facto two, I'm gonna ship off these goods. It's gonna get me two silver and two victory points. Ah, that's my one from earlier. Um, so these now go back kind of in a discard pile for shipping. So I just ship some goods to get some points. I could spend three silver and kind of keep going, but I know that I'm going to be ahead of Aaron. So let's clear this out and look at what the actual scores were without all these like crazy cards everywhere so you can get a better view of how the scoring worked. Oh, also while I'm cleaning up, since I did in fact complete a triplet, I'm going to grab one more silver. So let's go over scoring one more time just so you guys can see because a lot of it goes really quickly and I want to make sure that y'all know how this was calculated as we went. So up here above my estate and storage cards, here's Aaron. All right, so Aaron earned this triplet and he was the first to get it. So that's gonna be four plus one is five. He got three for just having this triplet. He already got the bonus for a triplet of the same color earlier. So three and one is four. So that's five, eight, 12. He was the not the first to get this triplet, but he did get one. So that he just gets four points for that for 16. Same here, which puts him at 20. Here, he's gonna to get to 22. And then here, he's gonna hit 25 because he was the first to build a building of each color. These down here did not score any further points because they weren't part of a triplet. So Aaron's total score across the game was 25. So let's move his stuff up and here's me. So here's my estate. I was the first to get a triplet of ships for five points. I was the first to get a knowledge triplet for workers for another five points and also pastures for another five, which puts me at 15. So this number is the total scoring for the triplet plus the one for the bonus. I also got three for this triplet because this triplet is only worth two. So 15, 18 plus four for 23 plus one of each kind of animal. That is another four points, so 27. One point for when Aaron built a cloister, 28. Two points for shipping goods, 30. So I got a 30 to Aaron's 25. Um, if I had fallen behind him during the game, we would have lost. And then in a multiplayer game, um, you break ties by what you have in your storage. So. I have a lot of stuff, but it doesn't matter for this particular case. So in this case, we were lucky. Um, we were victorious over Aaron because he just did not get that heavy card draw at the beginning of the game. 
sometimes it's like Aaron just can't stop getting triplets before you. And so he gets all these triplets and then bonuses and you have to fight to catch up. That didn't happen in this game. Um, one thing about Castles of Burgundy, the card game, is it's a little swingy. However, I do think it's really fun. I like trying to wring points out of the cards, trying to get the highest score possible. I find that really entertaining. And I hope that you did too. Happy gaming.